distortion. Uh, in homogeneous distortion, you start with straight lines and you make straight lines. But in a general case, if you start with straight lines, you can make curved lines. And so how can I, how are these related in some way? These are both distortions in the sense that the material is changing shape. But how do I relate them? So in other words, uh, there is a relationship between these two, but what is that relationship? Well, actually, I guess I, should, I forgot to mention these are, this is a heterogeneous distortion because straight lines become curved. So that's a general term that's often used. How are those two related? In other words, what is curvature at small enough scale that you pull, take curvature down a smaller scale? How do you describe that mathematically? Remember your calculus, right? What's the tradition? What's the, one of the first things you learn in calculus? Yeah, but <laughs> what did I just do as an example of? What, what math problem did we just do? Derivatives. derivatives. Curvature can be analyzed by derivatives, right? Mm -hmm. First and second derivatives are a measure of curvature. Uh, so curvature at small enough scale, if you get down to a small enough scale, is curvature becomes negligible and curvature becomes a tangent line. And so in the limit, as a curved line gets to a small enough scale, the curved line becomes a straight line and you can deal with this curvature at that scale that way. That's the math of, of the heterogeneous distortion is the derivatives if you go to a small enough scale, the curvature becomes, a, for all intents and purposes, straight, and you can measure the, that homogeneous distortion as a quantity we call spring. <coughs> uh, I already said that, so you can look in there. So heterogeneous distortion is, is related to the quantity we call strain by a derivative relationship. That thing I just did was an illustration of that. The gradient operator is a differential operator. So the derivative in space, so the variations in displacement field over space give rise to, the, and it basically is an analysis of curvature. You get down to a small enough scale, you don't have to worry about it. What, the only thing that makes, that would, it would be great if that's all there was to it. But the problem is kinematics also involves these other two stupid quantities, rotation and translation. And in general, the displacement field carries those quantities, those quantities, and that quantity. So a general description of kinematics carries all three, such that the strain, and one way to think of it, I always tell people, is the strain is the leftover component of the displacement field after you remove the rotation and the translation, that's the, the localized distortions or the localized vector fields that describe the motions at that scale once you remove those two leading components. Now, that sounds like a bunch of nonsense. Maybe it is to you at the moment. Uh, why did I put this here? Uh, oh, because many geologists, you can't read it up top of the screen, common misconception by geologists is to look at my screen and say, no, it's off that screen too. <laughs> a lot of geologists don't understand, actually don't necessarily understand strain in general, but they don't understand this distinction between heterogeneous distortion and homogeneous distortion. Heterogeneous distortion is just general deformation, and homogeneous distortion is the quantity we call strain. Uh, so any heterogeneous distortion at some scale can be considered homogeneous or can be considered a strain problem, but a larger scale has to be treated differently. And we'll see out some examples of that when we look at geologic problems as we go along. Why did I say this again? I already said this, but I got jumped ahead of myself. So this 
first characteristic makes strain sort of conceptually kind of straightforward because it's geometric. If you like to think of geometry, this is fairly, fairly straightforward to understand how it works, the, the sort of homogeneous distortion. But because of that fact that's buried in here with these two other quantities, it's an ugly quantity mathematically and because uh, it's hard to manipulate it because of all the junk that gets carried along with it. Uh, we're not going to do that here. You don't want to do that. You're not, this isn't a math course. What I want to get you to do is get a feel for this from this sort of qualitative description of rigid body and homogeneous distortion characteristic and how you can use that to think about geologic problems. Because we have to, when you really look at actual deformed rocks, there are issues that arise that are purely the result of the geometry of these different components of distortion. So that's a good spot for a break. <laughs>